So a couple of weeks ago on Adventures in Angular, Stephen Cooper was talking about the use of template references and ng template outlet as a way to provide customization for your Angular components. Now, I've looked at this briefly in the past, but given the fact that I just had a blog post about custom selects, I thought it'd be fun to revamp that post and explore his ideas behind ng template outlet. So to demonstrate here, this is a drop down menu. You can see my uh, null root here says pick a palette. And when I open it up, here I have my uh, options list. And you can see there's some pretty custom rendering here with the options. And if I select one, you can see that now the menu root is just the preview of the color palette. And these all do the same thing. Um, and I have multiple ones simply so that uh, I can demonstrate how the template reference can actually be reused across multiple components within the same view. So let's take a look at the code and see how this works. So first, let's just look at the app component. There's very little going on in the app component. Essentially, I went to colors.co, grabbed a bunch of palettes off the home page, and then defined them here as data structures. And that's pretty much the entire uh, piece of logic here. Um, let's look at the HTML template for the app component. So what we're going to do is reuse a couple of template references across several of our drop-down components. So we're going to define these all up at the top here using the ng template element. Um, and then we're using the hash sign or the pound sign to create a template local variable for that reference. So when I add the hash sign here, what it does is create a template variable that references this particular template. So in this case, this is the null template or the template to be used when I haven't picked a value within the menu root, right? And that's where it says pick a palette. Similarly, I have my template here with the local variable root template ref, which is the uh, which is essentially this button here once a value has been selected. Now, this one's a little bit more interesting because you can see I'm actually defining a template binding as part of the template signature here. So the option is going to be provided by the drop down menu, and then I can reference that option inside of my template HTML in order to render the markup. Um, and then finally, we have our options template ref, which again, we're using the pound sign to create a template local variable. And this has a few more uh, bindings here in the template signature. It has the option whether or not it's selected and whether or not it's active. And that's the, uh, the hover state here is the active. And again, we're just using these variable bindings in that template context to render this HTML. And there's nothing particularly amazing about this HTML. It just uses Flexbox, uh, which is a game changer for me and, uh, and does some fun stuff. Mostly, I wanted to demonstrate something that was non-trivial complexity for rendering within a drop-down menu. Now, let's take a look at how we render our HTML selects all using these template references. And you can see the null template ref, the root template ref, and the option template ref are all being passed in as input bindings to the custom select component. So the custom select component is expecting these as inputs, and then it's going to be using them and consuming them within its own HTML view template. And it, these are all exactly the same. In fact, like if I just come here, actually they have different classes that put them in uh, different places. But if I do this, and you can see, these are all exactly the same. So let's now take a look at the HTML select to see how it works. Um, I'm going to jump directly into the HTML view because I feel like that's the most interesting. So here's the HTML view for the, actually, you know what, let me jump into the component quickly just to show you here's the app select and then here's our input bindings. And again, you can see that I have the option template, the root template, and the null template. Okay, so those are being sent to the component as input bindings. They're available as public variables inside the HTML template, which is this. Now, the fun thing here is that the HTML select component defines its own template, which can act as a default or a fallback for other templates if they're not being provided by a calling context. So for example, if there is no null template provided by the calling context, I define a default null template, which you can see I'm falling back to here. So in this case, in the uh, root of the dropdown menu, if the null template wasn't provided as an input binding, I'm then falling back to this null template. And you can see that I'm using the ng template outlet directive with the ng template outlet input binding to essentially join this template to a context. And in this 
particular case, it's just an empty or implicit context. It gets more interesting when we use a different template, like the option template, uh, or the root template here, rather. And here you can see I'm providing a custom uh, context to that root template, which essentially sets up an object map or, or a value dictionary here of all the values that can be consumed within the template binding. So for example, I have the implicit, right? And if we jump back into the app component HTML, the implicit here is let option, right? It's not using a particular exported value, but you can see that we're also using selected and active. And if we jump back here, you can see the selected and active as uh, options on that context object. So the context object is a way for the um, select component to provide values as part of the template rendering, but provide values as part of the template consumption inside the component rendering. Sorry, my words there are not really great. Um, but again, so we have our template for the null, we have our template for the root, and then inside our drop-down menu, we're gonna use uh, an ng4. Now ng4 can technically take a template, but I didn't wanna do that directly there. Um, because I wanted to be able to map my own context. So inside of the ng4 iteration, I'm then again using the ng template outlet, consuming the option template passed in by the calling context, and then providing a custom context in which I can map my uh, various values in the select component to the context mappings to expose values to the template. Um, <clears throat> It's a, it's a bit of a mouthful. You kind of got to go over it a couple of times before you really understand how it's working. Um, the HTML select component code itself is mostly just noise for this demo. Again, I'm revamping my previous demo. So there's a lot of here, there's a lot of code here that has to do with the previous demo. Uh, for example, um, when I go to render, when I go to show the menu, I, uh, I do a whole bunch of positioning on the pop-up, right? And that's so it can render appropriately to, based on where the the component is right now if I shrink it down here you see I get the the menu um, the scrolling and whatnot um, so nothing in the actual code behind is particularly relevant to this demo really what I wanted to show was the use of ng template to define templates passing those into a custom component and then consuming those within the custom component using the ng template outlet um, it's, it's a really powerful approach. I haven't used it a whole lot myself simply because I don't create a whole lot of reusable components. Um, that's probably a chicken and egg problem. If I did this more, I might use more reusable components. Uh, but I think it's a really powerful tool to have in your tool belt and uh, definitely something I'm going to think harder about using going forward.